Lesson 26, Jesus Betrayed and Arrested In today's lesson, we are approaching the climax of Jesus' life and mission. Jesus came to pay the ransom price to purchase us back to God. In this chapter, we find Matthew recounting the events that preceded Jesus being sentenced to die by crucifixion. Each gospel writer tells us the details of these events, and in particular the events of the night before he was crucified. It is clear that the Spirit of God wants to teach us through these details to better understand the sinful nature of man and to know the grace, mercy, and patience of our God. The chief priests, along with the scribes and elders of the Jews, plotted how they could kill Jesus. Though he had done nothing worthy of death, still these proud men could not stand a young teacher like Jesus winning over the hearts of the people by his righteous teaching and healing ministry. Amidst this sad scene of treachery is one woman who anoints Jesus with costly perfume in preparation for his burial. While the disciples were indignant at this, Jesus said she had done a good work that would be remembered for generations to come. Then we hear about Judas who bargained with the Jewish authorities for 30 pieces of silver in order to hand Jesus over to them. Judas was a disciple of Jesus and considered a friend, and yet for a certain price he was willing to betray his good friend who had never done him any wrong. We see from the example of Judas the wickedness that lies in the heart of man and how man is deceived and directed by the devil. The Lord meets in an upper room with his disciples to eat the Passover meal and also institute what today we call the Lord's Supper. Jesus said that he wanted his disciples to eat the bread which symbolizes his body and drink the cup which symbolizes his blood which was to be shed for the remission of sins. Today, millions of Christians across the globe meet regularly to celebrate this simple remembrance meal. By sharing together this bread and wine, Christians proclaim the death of Jesus. We honor his name and recall how he gave his life as a ransom for us. It is a great honor to participate at the Lord's Supper and also a responsibility of everyone who claims Jesus as Lord and Savior. Jesus foretells how all his disciples would forsake him, and when Peter claims he is willing to die for him, Jesus has to point out to Peter that he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. Then Jesus takes his disciples to the Mount of Olives, a short walk from Jerusalem, and in the garden he prays. He asks his disciples to pray with him also, but they fall asleep because they were tired. Jesus continues to pray, asking his Father to allow this cup of judgment to pass from him, but also submitting to his will. Jesus knew he was about to face an excruciatingly painful death and is led to cry out to his Father for strength to meet his enemies. We should learn from this that even in the most difficult of circumstances, we can call out to our God and find strength, grace, and courage to face our greatest trials. Judas arrives with soldiers to arrest Jesus, but uses a kiss to identify Jesus to the others. This was a profound act of treachery and irony. One of Jesus' disciples strikes with the sword and manages to cut off an ear, but Jesus rebukes him and says to put away the sword, for those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Jesus reminds us here that he could call on twelve legions of angels to come to his defense, but he was submitting himself to these evil men in order to fulfill God's great plan of salvation. This teaches us that sometimes the ways of God and His plans require a path of suffering and sorrow. We should not think God always plans to make us prosper and enjoy pleasure, especially when there is sin and rebellion in the world. The way of eternal happiness is a road that leads us through the valley of death. When Jesus is led away to the high priest for questioning, 
They tried to find some charge against him, but could not come up with anything. The high priest finally asked Jesus to tell them plainly if he was the Christ, the Son of God. To this Jesus answered that he was. This caused those present to lash out angrily by striking him and spitting upon him. They believed he was blaspheming by making himself out to be God. Little did they realize that indeed the one they were striking and spitting on was none other than their creator himself. We also have the sad story of how Peter denied his Lord three times. He was fearful to admit his association with Jesus, lest he also be condemned with him. Peter's courage failed, and when he heard the rooster crow, just as Jesus had earlier prophesied, he was struck with bitter grief and went outside and wept. So we see how even the closest of friends failed to stand by Jesus in his trial and suffering. In fact, all of us must admit that we have failed him because of our sinful nature. Jesus stood alone and braved the storm of God's judgment, and this should cause us to bow and worship him, for he loved us and gave himself for us. I do hope you will learn how wicked and sinful man is, and see how much you need the mercy of God. He offers you salvation freely through Christ. Why not trust in the Lord Jesus today? For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28.